Hey guys, it's Roscoe, and on the Space Couch today, I'd like to talk about the Skylon space plane and Reaction Engines, the company behind it. <coughs> so, cast your minds back to the early mid 1980s. The American Space Shuttle has just gone into service, obviously, all those troubles that were ahead of it. The Russians are working on their uh, shuttle, the Buran which only ever made one unmanned flight around the Earth, I believe, and is one of the prototypes is now a, uh, what is it, it's an amusement ride in Germany somewhere, and the other one was destroyed when the building it was in was damaged. Very sad. The Europeans also wanted their own little uh, space shuttle, and it was called the Hermes. Now, it kind of looks like a cross between the X-Core Lynx space plane that's being built and the uh, Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser. Um, the combination of the two is actually quite ugly and it looks very boxy. That didn't actually go anywhere and ended up being cancelled in 1992. However, um, during the initial planning for the Hermes, um, many engineers having meetings and in that meeting there's a guy called Alan Bond um, was talking to one of his colleagues and saying, we're just reinventing the wheel here. This is a terrible design, or words to that effect. So he was part of British Aerospace, and he then had his own ideas on a um, single stage to orbit, SSTO as they call them, space plane. And that was called the HOTOL. Uh, British uh, design rather than the European Space Agency. That essentially looks like a missile with giant engines underneath it. Not the most aerodynamic of designs you'd think, but they thought this design's going to work. So it would have a uh, small payload bay in the centre, about eight tonnes, then the rest of the space plane would be fuel tanks. And because it's so heavy on the takeoff, it's actually launched on a rocket mounted trolley. You know like when they're testing like ejection seats and you see it getting and then it goes up. Well that sort of apparatus. Um, so it would be launched that way to help it get off the ground. Although it did have undercarriage and it could land normally once it completed its mission. Um, so that's how it would get launched. It would go into orbit, place its um, payload up there, satellites or whatever, and then it would return to Earth. Problem is, it's the type of engines it was using. Um, it wasn't a rocket as such. Um, it's essentially it was like a jet engine that has to then turn into a rocket engine. And the theory of that in physics, you can do it. But the mid 1980s, they just didn't have the technology. Um, there's a great documentary called The Three Rocket Men, I think it is, that goes into quite some depth on the Hotel and Skylon and reaction engines and the process. And when they were testing the engines for the Hotel, or oh, it's encased in ice, you know, because they're trying to cool it from hundreds of degrees down to minus hundreds of degrees uh, in an instant, literally. And at the time, couldn't do it without generating all the ice. Obviously, <laughs> if that's what's happening to your engine, your space plane is not going to fly. It's going to um, have icing problems, obviously, and will either crash or just not take off or it'll explode or whatever. So they had to then try and redesign the space plane. Um, because they found the placement of the engines at the back, because so it's long right here and then the engines are back underneath it. The centre of gravity, as all the fuel was burned off, kept shifting further and further towards the back, um, making it very unstable aerodynamically, which is also a very big problem. So the British government in the end lost patience with all of this and cut the funding because it seemed that these problems were insurmountable. Certainly for the technology of the time, it was very difficult. Um, Alan Bond wanted to continue on with his um, his research on this. Um, and he formed this company, Reaction Engines, to do that. Unfortunately, the government um, classified the plans for the hotel as top secret. So he couldn't even tell anyone outside of very narrow fields what he was actually trying to do. Couldn't get funding from the European Space Agency, couldn't get funding from companies or anyone just because the government said, no, this is top secret, which essentially means it's never going to get built. However, I do believe he had a copy of those plans, probably wasn't supposed to take them, and they were able to use those. And eventually the patents uh, ran out on the original hotel engine, so they were able to continue on. And eventually they've made a breakthrough, it appears, uh, in this cooling technology to cool the hot air coming in into cold air. 
uh, in like one hundredth of a second, and it's some fascinating technology. I was looking very close to their chest. Uh, I think it's some sort of carbon composites that they're using, proprietary technology that they've uh, invented essentially. Um, so the European Space Agency um, checked out this engine to see if it's an actual thing or if it's just pie in the sky just like Hotel was. Apparently those tests, they came back fine. Like This engine actually works. Um, which is great news. The British government invested £60 million in it, and under this British government, they don't really like to invest in much of anything, so this is how important they see it. Um, they've also secured additional outside funding, I think $350 million, to help take them through to the... Um, production stage of the engine. And the US Army, I'm not sure if it's the Army, but certainly the US military, um, have also been having a look at this engine because <laughs> can't think of anything they might find any uses for with an engine that can go from a jet engine to a rocket engine, travel at Mach 5 and take you into orbit. Nah, not a single use for that at all, I'm sure, militarily wise. So anyway, it kind of looks quite good for the Skylon space plane. Um, it seems there's so many of these people trying to build a space plane of some kind, it's fantastic. Obviously, these guys with the Skylon, um, it's actually, there's a passenger version, I reckon um, they could do um, essentially suborbital flights in four hours. Uh, it's that particular configuration of the Skylon space plane, I think it's called the LAPCAT-2. That's an acronym, I can't recall exactly what that stands for. Uh, it looks like the Skylon, um, except it's got two extra engines. You know how the Skylon has got the engines at the very end of the wing? Well, this version's got two under the wing also, like, say, a 737 or an A320. So, uh, it's an odd-looking configuration, though. Two engines under the wing and two at the end. I just hope they've learned their lessons from engine configuration problems from Holtol. I'm sure they have. So, um, that could be taking astronauts up to the International Space Station or uh, some of those other... Bigelow-style habitats that could be up there soon, um, placing satellites into orbit, and then just returning back to uh, the airport where it came from. It's a ceramic composite, I think, uh, skin that it has, so it doesn't have the problem with those ablative tiles, uh, tiles that the space shuttle has, or some of the standard uh, heat shields. Um, so that should be reusable many times. I think they're saying 200 times it could be reused for, which um, obviously uh, airplanes are used tens of thousands of times. But I think, yeah, this is the early days of this sort of thing. And I'm sure back in the 1920s, uh, for a plane to make 200 flights, that was quite a milestone. And that's probably the sort of level we're at with this. So anyway, um, these guys are doing the Skylar Space Plane Reaction Engines. Then you've got Richard Branson with Virgin Galactic building um, the Spaceship 2 and the White Knight 2. Um, then the giant version of that being built by, is it Paul Allen, I believe, of Microsoft, with that enormous, huge, uh, it's a scaled-up version of the, um, the Virgin Plane, the Strato Launch. I think the carrier plane's called the Rock, ROC, after that mythical bird. And obviously then you've got Elon Musk building um, his rockets in capsules, you've got Bigelow building his uh, habitats, uh, you've got people like Dave Maston building, um, uh, what are they, uh, lunar um, craft that could land there. Um, fascinating time, I love it. More spacecraft, more rockets, more space planes, more British space planes and this is an excellent British uh, invention. It really could be revolutionary. Um, Elon Musk was at a lecture at the Royal Aeronautical Society um, a year or two ago and Alan Bond, the guy behind all this, has also appeared there. Um, and he was asked, Elon Musk was asked, if he was familiar with reaction engines and he was like, mm, reaction engines, remind me. So they said, oh yeah, you know, like um, single stage to orbit space plane uh, with the engines. And he said, yeah, he, he was aware of it, but as far as he knew, um, it was a dead end um, with the state of the technology that he was aware of. Uh, obviously, it seems they've um, overcome that technology problem. Um, so we'll see. Maybe that's another competitor for him. But yes, um, suborbs to Australia in four hours or anywhere on the planet in four hours, 
that would be very good. I'd love to go back to Australia. I don't, I don't know how much that would cost. Probably very expensive in the initial uh, stages, I expect. So anyway, guys, that was just a video that was requested by one of my viewers, which I hope you enjoyed, um, on Skylon uh, and Reaction Engines. Um, as always, guys, please subscribe to my channel, like, leave a comment or a suggestion.